Hey, Marissa, how are you? I'm oh, fantastic. Hey, well, thank you so much for joining me. We're at the Coulson Hotel, and we're uh, it's an amazing. What would you call that? Uh, I'd call it a spectacular uh, foyer. That's so, what yeah, I'd call it. Yes, we see the sky. Yeah. Thirty stories high. That rhymes. You does. Like, you, you're, you're a poet, and you didn't know it. Yeah, you go. And I can't always make rhymes all the time. Oh, there you go. Hey, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Here in uh, Brisbane. And, and uh, I'd just like to uh, pick your brain. Pick, pick, pick. So Marissa, you're uh, currently at the moment, uh, you have a um, Southern Cross personal training. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Yes, and uh, that's out in the sticks, as you call it in Australia. You're living out in the sticks. Out. So where do you live? I live in a little place called Plainland, uh, and I have a studio on my farm. Wow, a farm studio. A farm studio. You know what's, you know what's amazing? is that a lot of the time people say personal training won't work here mm. uh, because there's too many personal trainers or there's not enough people or people don't have enough money or it's out in the country and there's not enough people out in the farmland. But you know, for whenever someone says that, someone like you goes and does it. You know, everyone else is saying it can't be done. So you have a personal trainer here on your farm out in, out in the farmlands. In a shed. In, in a shed. In wow. a shed. Yes. Wow, yes. fantastic. It's a fancy shed. I've, I've converted the shed, so it's, uh, it's lovely. And, so. and how, how many people do you train a uh, oh, week? How many sessions? Uh, I do uh, thir about 30 sessions a week. Um, probably about uh, 25 consistent clients. Yeah. I have quite a handful of them who do two, two sessions a week with me. Wow. Yeah, so that works. So on average, how far do people travel to come and see you? Uh, 15 to 20 kilometres. So people travel across the, the country, beautiful yep. drive, yep. to come and see you yes. out in the farm. Yes. And your typical client, describe your typical client. Uh, farmer. Farmer? Yeah, farmer people. Obviously, um, obviously you're in the farm. Yeah, place. I'm in the farming, Lockyer yeah. Valley. Yeah, so is so it the all... husbands, wives, families? Uh, it's a lot of the wives. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have... The husbands tend to think they don't need the exercise because they're obviously out on the farm doing stuff already. But it, it's, excuse my ignorance, isn't farming now just all about pushing leads and yeah. pushing buttons? And you are. Yes. You know, the ox. Yes. Know, pushing the ox yes. along the... Yes. Uh, so I have some interesting conversations I'm sure with some do. of the husbands. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, um, yes, a lot of the... And my group of people who I absolutely love to work with is yeah. 50 plus. Okay. So they're um, my age group. Yeah. So, so if, if you're you're in the country in the farm and you think, hey, I can become a personal trainer, training, you know, the the, the mums or the, the grandmums or whatever it might be out in the country over the fifties, then you're a shining example that it can actually be done, and yes. people will travel yes, to absolutely. train in the shed. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, in saying that, I do have people under that age. Yep. Uh, I've got my youngest is 23. Um, my oldest is 84. Yep. So I have a really broad range of ages, yep. and and it's just fantastic. I love it. I love, love what I do. Yeah. Well, well. And how much do you charge a session? I have 50 for a session. 50, yes. 50 sessions. Yes. Fantastic. So, a 30 sessions, that's around one and a half grand a week. Yes. Training out of shed, out of the country. Yes. With no real expenses because you're no. training from home. Yes. It can be done. So that's the Absolutely. end result. And I'm assuming you could get more clients, but you're quite happy with that number at this particular stage? Um, no, I'm not happy with that number. Were well, you never happy, are you? No, you're not. No. <laughs> I'm always happy. Yeah. But no, um, my goal is to get to 50. Okay. And uh, so I'm uh, just clearing a few things at the moment yeah. to make that happen. So that's really great. And I'm and well and truly on that path. On the path. Mm. Okay, so let's, let's go back in time. Yes. Rewind. Yes. What were you doing before you were in the fitness profession? I was a mum. You were a farm mum. I was a farm mum. Yep. I was, yep, I was raising three boys. Wow. Um, okay. So, uh, a great supportive farm mum raising your kids. Yes, I did. Uh, yes. So when did you start uh, thinking about I want to become a fitness professional or a personal trainer? I, I wanted to do something that um, that I could relate to my boys with. Yeah. Uh, so they were very active. They were really uh, sporty. Yeah. Um, I was always out there with them. Yeah. Um, I used to. Um, make sure they got lots and lots of exercise because I knew that the thing to keep young men, growing men, full of testosterone under yeah. control yeah. was to give them lots and lots and lots and lots of Fair exercise. Enough, that's just yeah, absolutely. So that started me on the path, and um, 
So then as they got older, I thought, well, it was initially, it was like, come on, boys, hurry up with mum. Yeah. And then it was like, mum, can you hurry up? And I'm like, oh my goodness, I've got to keep up with these boys, you know. So I thought, I've got to do something more yeah. to understand what's going on and to keep me uh, fit and healthy and strong yeah. to keep up with them. Wow. So I went, I've got to do, I, I wanted to pick something that would help me do that. Yeah. I also needed to still stay at home yeah. and I also um, needed to be a hands-on mum for them. Yeah. So I went, I looked around and I, I um, got, uh, somebody else was studying with you at, at that time and, and she suggested, why don't I do personal training? And I went, wow. Never thought of that. That'll work. Well, so I came you're paid in. Paid to do what you like. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and as it's turned out, the boys have really um, embraced it. Uh, they've they've been. Um, it, it really worked them hard, and they they did training, and they did all the sports, and they got right in, into into uh, strength training. Um, they've moved on a little bit now, but they're still health and fitness is the core of who they are. Uh, so it was a great example for them. And uh, well, I hey, got there's them. my super mum. She's of a uh, of vintage age, yes. but she still has the energy of a, yes. a young woman. Yes, absolutely. What a yeah. great role model for your kids. Yeah, so that's how I got into all this. Oh, yes, and, nice. I, and I haven't looked back. I just absolutely love it. And even now, because your kids are now, um, very, as I was chatting before, you know, they're, they're at university, going to university with PhDs and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. So they're very uh, well educated in engineering. And, engineering, and, medicine and nursing. But you're still doing what you love, you're still running your own yeah. business, yeah. you're, you're uh, in great shape, yeah. you're more more vintage age now, and uh, what, a, what a great example. Yeah. Absolutely. You should be very proud. Yeah, I am. Well, I, I remember when you did uh, complete the program, and Rory and I brought uh, Morton, which is Rory's mum out, who was in the 80s at the time. Yes. And you came out to, um, you launched your business in your shed. Yes. So we drove out into the sticks and the farmlands of just below uh, Wardenburg, it's like Darling yes. Downs type yes. thing, isn't it? Yes. So uh, we were going through the country, and there's obviously a little sunset, and it's getting dark, and we go through the, the roads, and all of a sudden we come to this big farm, and it's absolutely amazing. You've got the typical farmhouse, and you've got the shed, and all, all the locals came around, and we had a, a brief chat and Woody spoke to them about, you know, uh, kicking that old person out of your body with exercise. Yes. It was just such a fabulous, fabulous yes. night. Yes. And that really launched it for you, didn't it? Yes, it did. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, I've, that was uh, 10 years ago, this September. Doesn't, doesn't the decade fly, right? Oh, might. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's been a fantastic journey and I've learnt more about myself. Uh, than I would, I think I would have ever done. So when you started the program, you came because a uh, one a friend of yours really done the program. Yep. So when you did the program, what were some of the things that um, uh, that you enjoyed about it or had an effect on you? Learning, learning about the body. Yeah. Uh, I really um, in, in appreciated that. Uh, it also helped me address some of my early girl eating challenges I have, yeah. so that helped me on the path of um, realising that I there is another way, yeah. you know, and, and, and a healthy correct way, way. yes, yeah. a healthy way. Uh, and I um, enjoyed the business component of it, of uh, learning about business. Yeah. Um, and well, you're in business, and, and, and that's the thing yeah. a lot of personal yeah. trainers don't realise, they yeah, think it's all about like, doing the fitness. Yes. But yes. without the business, you're not going to get no, any clients no. to do the yeah. fitness. I mean, I, I constantly, or every day, refer to what I've been taught. So what, every are the, day. what are some of the valuable things in the business that you found very, very useful? In terms of business? Yeah, yeah marketing. Yeah. How to market myself. Yeah. Uh, how not to spend lots of money on marketing. Because I, I actually did do that a little bit. Yeah. Because I listened to other people. Yeah. And they went, no, 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 you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. I went, ching, ching, ching. Yeah, absolutely. And I spent a fair bit of money on marketing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now, then I just stopped listening to the people who really thought they knew but didn't know what yeah. to do. Uh, and I just went back to what you teach. And it's a system, and I just follow the system. And it works. It just works. Yeah.
So what were some of the ways that you got your first first clients? What were some of the things you did? Because a lot of people will say, okay, well, it's great uh, that I'm a trainer, but how do I get my, my, my first client? And we cover all of that in the program, as you know. Yeah, but absolutely. Because some, some things work for some people and some things work for others in different markets. What are some of the things that work for you to get your clients? Uh, I wondered about that when I first started because um, we don't have, you know, on our street, it's it's two and a half kilometres long and you might just have 50 houses. Yeah. Whereas when you're in the suburbs... Long street. Yeah. I'm when, just running up and down the street. Yeah, it is. It's true. <laughs> Back in an hour. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Uh, and whereas in the city you've got a block yeah. and on your block you might have 50 houses. It's not, so, it's not like you can walk to all your neighbours and do a letterbox shop. No, no. But... Um, I actually did, but I did it with my car instead. Yeah. So I just drove <coughs> everywhere doing fat male drops yeah. and uh, in, introducing, Very powerful. My, yeah, yeah. introducing myself through fat male. Mm. And uh, I'm still using it today. And uh, I also did do um, speaking uh, in public groups, like with women's groups and cancer groups. And uh, I haven't done so much of that of late. Yeah. I've gone back to fat male. Yeah. And the other thing I've tapped into is working with the allied professionals, like yeah. talking to my doctors, talking to the physios, um, getting referrals from them. Building a great professional network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's work too. And um, I've, of course referrals from the people I drive. So, yeah. so for those who are watching who haven't done this program, yes. obviously if they have done the program they've been well trained in fat mail. For those yes. who haven't done the program, just give, give a brief explanation of what fat mail is, because there is some fat mail. Yeah, fat mail is an introduction to uh, me as a fitness professional working in my area uh, and offering services um, to help them get uh, their health and fitness back. And in it is a little surprise for them because it's like you don't, you might not know me from a bar of soap, and inside it is a little, little, bar, of little soap. bar of soap. And uh, it really appeals to people. Well, particularly because when you go to the letter box and there's a, an envelope with something in it. Yeah, so absolutely. It creates the curiosity, what's that? Yes. So you open up and yes. this might be the bar of soap. Or yes. it might be um, um, take time out to look after your body. And then include this little time out bar or something yes. like that. So yes. there's lots of things you can do yes. and we recover yes. lots of those. So you found that to be the, the most effective, mm. uh, cost effective too, because it doesn't cost very much. Yeah. And, so it's very, and actually I only realised recently how powerful it is. Uh, because I did my, I did my first, le um, redid my uh, fat male drop in one area, went back six months later and did the second letter to follow up with it. And a lady rang me and she said, oh, she says, I've got your fat male here with your tea bag. I went, oh, great, thank you. And she goes, yeah, she says, um, I've still got your first letter. She said, but now, now I'd like to come and have a cup of tea with you. There you go. So I went, oh, okay, yeah. that's fantastic. So the tea bag is a yes. trigger to come and have a cup of tea yeah. and talk about your health and fitness That's right, yep. So, so it it's really like the, the first thing in, uh, most important in marketing is get people's attention and yeah. being remembered. That's and right. They're, they're little tools that help, yeah. help you become remembered. So I'm going to assume that in your local area, everyone, be, everyone knows who you are now. Yes, yep. Yes. There's, uh, there's, there's Even if they've doing. never met you, they know who you are by your family. Yeah, that's right. So when, when the time comes where they said, oh, I need to lose some weight, or I've got a bad knee, I need some rehab, the first person that's going to come to their mind yes. is the person who is the most memorable, mm. even though they met you or not met you. Yeah, no, that's right. And some people say hello to me down at down um, the plaza and go, hello, Maurice. I'm going, hello. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I think they know like... me from my fat mile yeah. because, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Famous. Yeah. Movie stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you started that. How long did it take you to build your clientele base up to, to say, 30 or so? Because when, when we came and visited you at the launch, you had quite a few clients already. So. Yes, I did. Um, and that, um, it's been a bit of a phase because um, I, I had my initial launch and then I did about three years of constant training. And how many, well, how many did you get the clientele up to then? How many sessions? I think it was 25. So you got, yeah, got 25 up, yeah, I got years. up to that. And that was a consistent number and I was happy with that. And then my boys went through a stage and then some things changed and, and then I got, came, went back to sort of a poor number of about my absolute diehards who, um, who I just kept training them because I had, you know, life happens and things happen. Mm. Um, so I went back to about 10, yeah. and in the last so 12 always, months, you always kept your, oh, I've your, always kept it going. Your fingers yeah. in, in the fire. Absolutely, time. and so in the last 12 months, um, I said, right, you know, I'm going to. The boys are all settled; they're all moved on, so now I can do this for me and yeah. now, and really concentrate on. It. 
So I'd say to get it back up to 30, it's taking about six months. Okay. And that's too long. Like, you know, I, I know I can do that quicker than that. What's that? Um, it is, it is. The six months are going to pass you by anyway. Yeah, exactly, that's right. I yeah. think that every time. Yeah, it's going to pass you by anyway, but now you've got 30 times. Yeah, exactly, that's right. So, uh, so now my goal is to uh, get my 50, yeah. and I'll be, I'll be happy with that. So you've, um, you're a classic example of when you uh, join Max, you have a life education because you came into the program, you launched the business, you got up on your feet, you put it up to 30, 25 sessions a week, yep. you did that for three years, yep. and life happens and personal yep. things happen and all that yes. bit, so you brought a band down to 10 and then you did some other things and all that bit, and then you came back and yes. you, you want to take advantage of life education and you're now redoing the program again. Yes, I am. You know, yes. Sharpening the sword. Uh, to continue your battle to fight the obesity challenge that you have in the world. Um, it, it's just been wonderful to be able to tap back into the program. Mm. Um, I really needed refreshing. Yeah. Um, you forget things as you go. And I'm really enjoying, and it's a bit surprised about how much I'm remembering, mm. um, but yeah, no, really enjoying going through it and, and relearning it all. And, and to be fair to my clients, yeah. because I've got a lot, you know, obviously with the people who are 50 plus, they come with a lot of challenges, yeah. like health initiative challenges. Um, you know, you know, arms, legs, you know, health, heart, all sorts of osteoporosis, all and, sorts and, of stuff. And not to mention the, the, the mental challenges that come with that. Oh too. man! Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I really needed to be sharp, and I'm still not sharp enough. And I've got to just keep up this learning all the time yeah. to make sure I'm the best, best I can give them. You know, so how, how beneficial has the, the, the life education been to you? Oh, it's been amazing. Like, yeah, it's, where else to that? You know, I just, I don't know, but I, I, it's been really uh, one of the big reasons why I've been able to succeed is because I can constantly refer back and go back and ask and tap into you guys. And, yeah. you know, you're just so great at support and, um, you know, you know, if you don't do it, it's your own fault, nobody else's. And I'm really grateful, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And yeah. you know, your success is our success. And <coughs> you did the program 10 years ago. Mm. Now it's 10 years, and we, we've got a workshop today in Brisbane, so we're going over across to the facility to do some more training. And you're yes. back here 10 years after, yes. sharpening the skills, yes. uh, reinforcing the skills. So well, you went, went, the interesting view is we went to the program the first time, and you weren't a practicing personal trainer. Now you're going through the second time as a practicing personal trainer. Yes. So what's the difference in, in watching, uh, uh, we're going through the, 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 the program, one where you, you, you have no experience, two as experience? Um, I can see all the mistakes more clearly. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the thing that I go, wow, gee, look what I did. No, 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 you can't do that. Uh, just follow the system, you know, do what you've been told to do and yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, and have faith in the system. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's the thing that's been the biggest message to me. Um, I think because when you first start something, you go, oh, I know this, or I'll do it this way, or someone out there tells you to do it that way, and so you go, oh, yeah, they're probably right, and I'm not right. And even though you've learnt it and you've been told and shown, you still listen to the other people, and now go... You probably aren't even doing it. And then I've got no idea, and you just go, you know what? I'm just doing what these mobs say. They've done it. They're so successful. They're so great. I'm just going to do that. I don't care what anyone else says. It's just blocking the ears and just focusing, just yeah. and being really focused. Yeah. Hmm. And I love it. And you do, and you and you're getting the results. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's wow, cool. fantastic. <laughs> so you're uh, doing the program. You've been doing some uh, a bit more of the advanced diploma stuff as well. Is that yes. is that the, the mentoring? How, how how do you find the personal mentoring in the program? It's wonderful to have people to ask who know what they're doing and know you can trust their answer. Mm. That's that's the most important thing because you have I think there is so many people out there who want to give you an opinion and half the time they don't know what they're talking about uh, and then it's very hard to well you know we invariably listen um, but when you know you've got people who've done it who are successful who are um, there you know have, have great integrity then you know you can rely on them. And it's not about leaning on them or wanting them to 
prop you up or anything like that. It's just knowing that what you're being told is correct. And I absolutely 100% believe that. So thank you again. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. Thank you again. Yes. So share with me and the people, at, uh, the millions of people around the world watching this at the moment. What are the things that you enjoy most about or get most satisfaction out of being a professional trainer helping people achieve their health and fitness goals? Oh, absolutely the change that you see in the people. Mm. You know, you can take them from being very unfit, very unhealthy and turn them into a happy, fit, healthy person who's got a lot more years added to their life because of the age group I deal with. Um, yeah, just turning them around. And, and I've done it, and it's just an incredible feeling to see how you turn those people's lives around. And uh, that's so rewarding. You can't put, you, I can't put money on that. That is just a, a, oh man, it's the best. So what are some of the conditions you help people overcome um, that come to mind? Okay, I've got a man who I actually believe I've helped save his life. Uh, he was a hundred and twenty. Life saver, that's what you are, life saver. Life saver, yeah, saver. Uh, he was um, 129 kilos, yeah. he was injecting insulin four times a day, wow. he, uh, was, he's 55. He currently has disease and diabetes. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, and uh, he's now um, down to 111 kilos, yeah. he's dropping in his insulin units, uh, oh massively, oh, I think he was on 150 units. Yeah. Um, now he's down to 75 and his aim is to just keep dropping them. Yeah. Uh, he's getting fitter, he's losing weight, he's got more energy back, he's living life. Or he's just a current current one. I mean, there's, I've got lots of stories of people like that. Um, I've got another man who's a bank manager, a national bank manager. Um, an older man, so he was 70-ish. Uh, and he spent all of his life like this. So when you went to stretch him, he couldn't even stretch his arm back. Like, wow. he was so inflexible. Anyway, we managed to get his arms back, which was great. But the thing with him was, when I first started training him, like not even five minutes on the tread treadmill, he was, you'd swear he was gonna have a heart attack. Like he was so puffed, so dripping with sweat. And his, his complexion was grey. Like he was so unhealthy. Uh, we got him down to 92 kilos. Uh, he now cycles. He's hiking. Uh, he's, got, he's in, he's in, um, he's in different sort of, uh, social groups. Yeah. The sad part of that is his wife died yeah. sort of a couple of years <coughs> ago, um, but it really helped him through the depression and the transition of that change. So, so he's he's just amazing. I just yeah love how he's come wow. come out and he's happy. He's actually he's still very sad, of course. Of course. He's sad with his loss, um, but he's just really happy. He's out there doing things, and which has pulled him out of that whole hole he was in. Yeah, so yeah, there's lots and lots of people. Wow, that's just amazing. So if you really want to help people, this oh, is a, it is. a great vehicle <coughs> to oh, really amazing. change people's yeah. lives, not just fitness, but mm. all aspects that are connected mm. to that. Mm. You know, one of the most valuable value, values you could ever have is your help health and fitness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> so what, what do you feel being now experienced for 10 years? What are some of the key things that you make a great trainer? You need to love helping people. Yeah. It's not about um, you wanting to get people fit to how you think they should be. And you've got to be able to listen to people and really delve into their, their life where they're at and help raise them. So you've, you've got to be uh, have empathy and understanding. Um, and even though you're training to a time frame, You've got to, in your training session, you've got to give them so much more time outside of that training session to know and genuinely be there for them. If you're, if you're not going to be a genuine person to help them, you know, you might as well just go away because, you know, these people are really investing in you and, it, and, and the, the level of responsibility I feel um, because they, you become so important in their life that, you know, You've got to be, you've got to be on your game and really, really, really want to do this. Because if you pull out from underneath them, you pull away, and you know that's that's a big part of them, you know, that you're going to take away. So you've, you've got to really want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. 
but that's who I train and the people I train. You know, there's different facets of people. And there's, you know, I don't go near the bodybuilding things or, um, you know, training for marathons. I mean, I would help people and I've yeah. helped people do runs and all sorts of stuff. It, it's a mixed bag. You, you obviously seem to really know your target market. And mm. sometimes you attract your target market. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You know, I love, I love the group of people I work with. Yeah, absolutely. So what is the, um, you shared before your, where do you see yourself in you know, one to two years? Well, in, I definitely want to have 15 clients by one year yep. <laughs> and sooner. Yep. Uh, in two years, I, I, I want to keep doing what I'm doing so it can be my Create so I can get some leverage from that to do the other things in my life that I want to do. Yeah. So um, I'm I've thought about opening up you know bigger studios or um, you know there's um, an absolute need for the area where we are because it's the, the western corridor from from um, a, a big city that's developing fast and there's already talks about big gyms going in there. Um, but I want to stay focused on the people I'm at, and I think if I can really stay focused on those people, I'll, I'll create a, a really big, um, great business with quality. And I want to keep the quality rather than the quantity. So what do you think, um, and there's certainly, uh, what, there's a certain type of person who would prefer to come to your farm and train in your school at the time you should, rather than go to commercial gym. Yes. What, do you, what do you think is the difference between why they choose that home field versus a commercial gym? We've got two big gyms in the Lockyer Valley, mm -hmm. um, the Gatton Gym and the Laidley Gym. And unfortunately, it, it's they're not run professionally. And people, I've, I've had numerous people come to me from there mm -hmm. saying they don't get any help. Yeah. They get the first first day introduction and then they're left to themselves and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, and they need it's not just the it's not just the physical uh, and machine instruction support. It's not just the equipment. No, they need the psychological support to yeah. help them get through the hurdles that they're gonna face on the way. Yeah. And a lot of them you know, a lot of them would stop. Would if you, you don't help them would, through would those you see through your, those your clients being comfortable in a gym gym center? No, not at all. And, and, and a lot of them told me that. Well, yes. neither, neither shop, right or wrong, that's really important. Absolutely, that's There right. are certain people who Absolutely. love going to the gym, they know what they're doing, they love hanging out in front of all the yep. equipment, and yep. front of the mirrors and that bit. Yep. But there's also a huge chunk, because I understand only 10% of the population has to go to the gym. So you get 90% of the population who find the gym uh, <coughs> a bit uh, uh, intimidating, yes. no service, whatever it might be. Yes. So they're going to be attracted to uh, people like you or whatever uh, other um, type of marks there are. Obviously, your markets people love that, and that's what you specialise in. Yeah, indeed. And you know, particularly for the people who are really big, yeah. they they are very intimidated by the gyms. Yeah. Um, and well, the gyms fit people. Absolutely, and and they don't even know where to start. Yeah. And uh, so they love coming to somewhere that's small, quiet. Um, it's all about them. Doesn't whatever they say doesn't go outside the four walls, and they build confidence and trust, which um, and they put faith in me, yeah. and then it gives them hope. You know. So what's in what's what's in, in your shed? What's in my shed? Basically, what, yeah, what are yeah. The basic um, I've got a machine. machine. Yeah. I've got a treadmill, a roller, uh, a chest press elliptical uh, trainer, a set of free weights, and a leg press. Okay, so you don't have 27 treadmills and heaps no. of it. No. It's just no. all the bare essentials. Yep, yep. And that's all you need. And a big front lawn. <coughs> of course, we can do lots of yes. uh, outdoor drills. stuff. When, when they want to, if they, if we want to have a bit of a change, we, <coughs> you know, not in summer, because it's just been horrendously hot, mm. uh, but in, in the cooler months, so, you know, we'll do some sessions outside too. So being a, uh, a full-time farm mum, mm -hmm. now to a fitness professional who runs a, uh, a shed out uh, of mm -hmm. the farmland, what is the difference between the, the before and after Melissa? From farm mum to now fitness professional? 
you got all day? <laughs> <laughs> heaps, heaps. I'm just a different person. Um, oh goodness, I, I just uh, have changed on so many, so many levels. Yeah, I've just, yeah, it's, it's just um, been an amazing journey that I've just been every day learning and growing about other people and about myself. And um, it's, it's just made me a lot more confident. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot more belief, self-belief in myself. And so now I'm, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Yeah, absolutely. You go for it. Yep, absolutely. Going to be the champion I was born to be, mate. There you go. <laughs> and you, mate. Obviously, obviously around Australia. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, just to finish off, what would be some advice you'd give to someone watching who's thinking about a career change or coming to the profession? But, yeah. You know, they're not sure. There might be uh, a little bit of self-doubt or whatever it might be. If anyone has to push through that barrier, what would be some advice you can give to them, someone who has a job that I may not like and love a career in the profession, but they're still trying to make that decision to take that action? I've been in a job in my earlier years before children that is where my life's path took me and I thought I was doing the right thing and I was earning money and I would think, is this what life's all about? Is this what it is? Is this as, as, as exciting as it gets? Is this as, as much as I can do? And so I wasn't happy in my job. So if you're not happy in your job, if you're not happy in your job, go and find your job you love. Because once you find what you love, like honestly, I just, I never have a work day. Yeah. Honestly, I love, I'd, I'd work eight days a week. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it so much that none of it's work. And I put my heart and soul in it. And um, look, you just need to follow here yeah. and what you really believe in. And uh, when you do that, just doors just start opening up and you just become who you want to be. Hmm. Wow. Some magical penetrating words. Thank, thank you so much because <laughs> you've given us the most valuable thing that uh, anyone, can, anyone can give in their life, which is your time. Mm. Unfortunately, there are people wasting their time in a job they hate and they can be um, uh, investing their time in you know, a career that they love. You have now. I look forward to the next ten-year relationship with you. Thank you. Me too. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Oh, yeah. <laughs>